So this is my uh, Talo detector board that I uh, uh, did a while back, and I'll include a link to that video. I had someone uh, mail me and uh, ask whether you could run this at 150 megahertz, and uh, kind of my initial thoughts was uh, probably not. Um, I mean, this, this is sort of designed for HF use, but I thought it might be an interesting exercise to sort of go through and uh, see if I can get this board running at 150 megahertz and how we would go about designing the bandpass filter and so on and so forth and just see if I can get it working. So anyway, uh, here we are. Uh, I think the first step that I, I just want to go through is um, I, I do have some sort of fixed values for the various HF uh, bands. Uh, but step one is to sort of build a band, put a bandpass filter together that would work at 150 megahertz. So let me just walk you through sort of, sort of the experimental approach I have. I know there are uh, calculators online and uh, I think they're, they're excellent for the most part, but uh, that might be interesting to see how I approach this from an experimental perspective and uh, see how we go. Okay, so let's start with uh, sort of the general uh, structure of the double tune bandpass filter that I've, that I've been using. So it basically has a transformer on input and a transformer on output for impedance matching. Uh, these two caps here are variable caps, uh, so you can adjust it. And then we have this uh, uh, coupling capacitor between the, the two resonators. Uh, so we have all unknowns at this point. Um, and so the first step is to choose uh, an inductance and you know this is basically uh, kind of the experimental stuff I'm going to choose uh, 150 megahertz 100 uh, nano henrys uh, that's about uh, uh, I think around about um, 10 turns on a T37 zero so it's kind of a good starting point so the next thing that we need to pick is uh, what capacitance goes with 100 nano henrys to to get something resonant at 150 megahertz so let's move over to uh, a resonance calculator and and have a look at okay so here we are on one of the many great resonance calculators there are on the on the web uh, so i've got my frequency of interest uh, my inductance let's hit calculate so this gives me a figure of about 11 uh, picofarad now remember this is uh, a this is a variable, uh, a trim capacitor in the in the input. So what I need, what this means is I need to select a, a trim capacitor that is, let's say, from zero to twenty picofarads. So let's move back to the um, circuit and start to plug in some values. Okay, so here we are back on the circuit. Here, let me put in eleven point three pico for both uh, for both caps there. 3 picofarad. Uh, we're not done yet though. So the other thing that we need to choose is an appropriate value for uh, the input side and the output side of the transformer. And what it always works out to be is basically a five turns difference between here and here. So this has five turns less than this. And what that does is it matches uh, uh, 50, 50 ohms on the input and the output. Uh, don't ask me why. Uh, I've tried to research uh, and, and find the answer to that, but I haven't been successful so far. So if anyone knows the answer, please let me know. But basically, five turns on in five turns means uh, five turns squared difference in terms of uh, inductance. So that is four nano henrys on the input and the output. Um, and so the next step is, well, let's have a do a simulation in LT Spice and let's see what this uh, uh, what this structure looks. Okay, so I've got this in AC analysis mode. Let me just run the simulation and see what we get. I'll uh, probe the output here, and as you can see, there's a nice bandpass filter structure uh, that's centered around about. It's a a little bit off from 150 megahertz but as you can see it's a little bit low actually it needs to be a bit higher but as you can see we've got a good sort of first pass uh, uh, at uh, at designing this bandpass filter uh, purely experimentally um, so what I'll do is uh, I've already uh, kind of got this on the board and we will see what the actual um, bandpass fil filter looks like uh, uh, on the uh, spectrum analyzer. Just one note before I go. Um, interestingly, uh, so this uh, decoupling cap here is 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 one of the hard parts, uh, particularly as you go higher in frequency. This decoupling, this coupling capacitor needs to get smaller and smaller, um, and you'll see it in the um, 
uh, in the spectrum analyzer output is you can tell if you've got too much capacitance here because you'll get this sort of double peak output in the bandpass filter. If you don't have enough capacitance here, what it'll look like is a sort of a rounded dome shape uh, where you get a lot of loss. Um, so they're the two sort of different uh, outputs you can see. And, let, and just, to, just to see that, let's change this to, uh, to be overcoupled. Let's add five picofarads there instead of one picofarad. Run the simulation again. And you can see in the output now, bear with me, uh, so there's that pronounced double peak uh, because we're now overcoupled between the two resonators. Uh, so let me change it back to being undercoupled. So let's say 0.5 of a picofarad and rerun the simulation. And you can see this is what undercoupled looks like. Uh, so instead of a sort of a flat curve, you've got sort of this rounded hump and you've got some uh, some kind of kind of some loss going on there. So let's change it back to one picofarad. And again, this is all experimentally. I know there are uh, calculators that, that that do all this for you, but I, I often like to just fiddle around with this stuff. So let's run that simulation. You can see that we're back to that flat peak. So let's anyway go over and have a look at the board. Uh, I've got this sort of wired up. Uh, we'll have a look at the. Uh, uh, at uh, what it looks like in the spectrum analyzer. Oh, just one other thing before I, I go over to the board. Uh, so uh, if you want to know the, the answer to, so how do you actually get 100 nanohenries uh, on, uh, in an inductor? Uh, so this toroids.info is a great place to go. So first thing we have to do is select a core that's going to work at the, the, the frequency of interest. So you can't use, like here's T37.2, it's going to tell you that basically uh, this T37.2 can only usefully go up to 10 megahertz. T37.6 goes up to 40 megahertz. So what I'm using here is a T37.0. And so if I want uh, 100 nanohenries, I put in uh, 100 nanohenries right there. And you can see that results in 14.3 turns. Now, you can't do 0.3 of a turn, so uh, what I've done is uh, basically I rounded it down to 14 turns and then uh, so that's on the uh, uh, on the uh, resonator side on the input side I need to divide this number of turns by five so that comes out to roughly three turns so I've got three turns on the input side and then uh, 14 turns on the output side anyway let's move over to the board Okay, so here's the uh, here's the board. There the, there's that pair of T37 zeros with uh, 14 red turns and three green turns. You can just about see the green. Um, and then I have a pair of uh, 20 picofarad trimmers here. Um, and so the, this is the resonator pair here. This is the resonator pair here. And uh, <laughs> this is the trick I've used for the um, coupling capacitor. And I uh, learned this off. There's a great channel. Uh, he doesn't he doesn't post anymore though. Unfortunately, called Dev uh, uh, Dev Tty S zero. Um, it's apparently called a gimmick cap. Uh, it used to be all the rage in in radios. Not so much anymore. But this is how you get low. Uh, if you want low picofarad value, this is how you can do it. And uh, it, the interesting thing about it is is you can adjust it too because. If you want to increase capacitance, you, you just simply uh, you simply wind this around a little bit more. If you want less capacitance, you unwind it. Um, so let me just zoom in a little bit on that. Now, having focus problems, but as you can see, it's basically a just a simple pair of uh, uh, of wires without a connection wrapped around each other. But anyway, let's have a look at the spectrum analyzer and have a look at the um, uh, where we are with the. Uh, you know, got a bit of a bit of light on the spectrum analyzer there. Sorry, apologies for that. So as you can see uh, there, um, we're close, close but not quite. So as you can see, I've got a nice curve there. Um, it's actually a little bit undercoupled perhaps, but uh, and it goes from around about 130 megahertz up to, let's say, 140 megahertz. So a little bit lower than, uh, th than we really want. So just for fun, let's, uh, let's uh, change that to the windings on that little gimmick capacitor. So I'll increase the windings and we'll see what happens. 
And what we should start to see is as I increase the capacitance, I get that double, the uh, sort of double um, uh, peak arrangement that indicates that it's, uh, it's now slightly overcoupled. So you can see we're starting to get that double uh, peak there, but also the bandpass filter itself has shifted lower in frequency. And so let's unwind that a little. And uh, sorry, I'm doing this uh, in behind the camera here. And you can see as I unwind it, the uh, I get that uh, undercoupled approach that, that we start with. So as you can see from this, um, we are not around the frequency of interest. We're about 10 megahertz below the frequency of interest. So the first thing I'm going to do to uh, try and rectify that is remove turns from the uh, from the input and output uh, transformer uh, on the resonant side. So uh, I'll what I'll do is I'll remove two turns from the uh, resonant side, taking it down to 12 turns on the input and the output transformer. So I'll do that and come back and we'll see what we see. Okay, so we're back. Um, I've removed two turns from uh, two of the red turns from each side here. So we're now down to uh, 12 turns on each side. I, I didn't change the uh, um, the green turns at all. So it's 12 to three turns um, and the, the these caps are unchanged. Um, and this is the same arrangement here. So just panning up to the uh, spectrum analyzer, we can see the, let me zoom in a little bit. So you can see that probably. So as you can see, now we've moved the, uh, so before the, the sort of peak was around here from 130 to 140, but removing those two turns, now uh, we have a, uh, a band pass around about, well, the, the middle of it is around about, so let's say 147, but 150 megahertz is comfort comfortably within that uh, band pass. Now, it does have a bit more loss than, than is ideal. So you can see there's uh, about nearly minus 2.6 uh, dBs of loss there. Um, and that could be attributed to kind of many different things. But uh, the upshot is uh, at least the bandpass filter part of the uh, of the Talo detector works. Now, what I might do is um, I'm just going to wrap this video here, um, and uh, but I will proceed on with the other parts. I'm I'm kind of intrigued to know uh, how good of uh, a reception I can get out of 150 megahertz with this uh, with this setup. So anyway, I thought this might be of interest, a, a bit of experimenting with uh, bandpass filters. Um, certainly if you have any questions or uh, alternatively suggestions for how I can do this uh, better, I'd, uh, I'd love to hear about it. Um, you know, I think to some extent um, this sort of double-tuned bandpass filter uh, itself um, you know, it's a, bit, it's a little bit inflexible, so I might come out with come up with some sort of different arrangements. Um, like I said, there's plenty of uh, bandpass filter, double tune bandpass filter calculators that are online that I could uh, potentially use here. But anyway, I'll wrap up for now, and uh, I will continue with this board in a subsequent video.